Yes, we are live. Um, hello, Peter, and welcome very uh, welcome today to my November session of Making Events Easy. I've been having these sessions, um, I think this is the fifth one now, um, since lockdown really, to help people who are moving events uh, online to sort of get a handle of that to make it life a little bit easier for them because it hasn't it hasn't been easy <laughs> and so today i've invited peter doak along from peter doak uh peter doak global advertising pdg if you see him coming up and um, to talk all about facebook ads because i know that for a lot of people that it it's a big it's a big hurdle really trying to organize uh, a facebook ad and many people don't do it because they just haven't a clue where to start so peter thanks very much for joining me today and would you just like to say a little bit about your company? I know that we both, I saw that you 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 started about 2015, is that right? Yeah, Alison, thanks so much for asking me on to, to talk to you um, about, about Facebook ads today. Um, the business is PDG Advertising and it's what we do all day, every day, online advertising, Facebook ads, Google ads, um, Instagram ads, email marketing, uh, Anything that really impacts the customer journey online is what I'm all about and what my my small team is all about. Um, I did start in 2015. I started the business in 2015. So time has flown quite quickly and it's five years later. And I've gone from being working out of my car at times, if I could get an internet connection from my phone, uh, coffee shops, um, annoying the baristas uh, for their Wi-Fi codes all the time. Um, libraries was a good one. Um, and then to a co-working space in East Belfast Enterprise. And mm -hmm. then um, that, that was great working in there, like a hot desk. And then we got a small office. Um, and then we um, were able to get a bigger office and then an even slightly bigger office. And now we've got an office uh, headquarters in Portadown um, that we've got four team members working um, with us now. Well, four team members, including me. So there's four of us that work at PDG. And that is uh, a rapid snapshot of the last uh, five years. Wow, well, that's, that's good going because I started in May 2015 as well. And well, I've always kind of worked from home, but I was in a co-working space in Belfast up until the pandemic. <laughs> Edits as well, because I think you need a bit of you need a, need a bit of socialization with other people as well. Um, but you know, how how have you found business during the pandemic? Have you have you actually been busier because people had to move online, or how has it been for you? Yeah, it it's been we're, we're so lucky in what we do at PDG Advertising because it, it's been the opposite effect of what basically most other businesses have had the experience the um it has been a, a complete upturn for digital advertising companies like like myself um and a lot of people now want to move online and do things online whereas before they knew they wanted to and they knew they had to but um now some people absolutely have to have to move online and it's been a real acceleration of um digital and, and digital skills um for for companies so um, for for us, we've just been so 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 lucky with that, and really grateful that we're in this um, this space. It was a little bit, you know, stressful at the start whenever we didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but it came became pretty clear uh, pretty quickly um, that instead of the business just disappearing, um, it was going to get busier. So. Um, we have been working from March uh, completely flat out with very little holidays. Um, and I suppose even if we did have holidays, where would we go at the moment? <laughs> this is it. This is it. Which was, was the weird paradox of there being a lot of work on um, and nowhere else to go. So we may as well do it and make the make the most of it and and try to um, navigate this this weird weird world that we're in we're in right now. Yes, yes, because I like I I was in a, I was in a strange position too because a lot of my clients, even though I'm a virtual assistant and I've always helped people remotely, um, a lot of my clients were actually delivering face to face events, and you know training and courses, and then we were suddenly in this world of oh my goodness we're go like how are we going to survive this and you know, and in that way I ha I had to pivot with my own clients to actually move a lot of stuff online and you know. 
for a lot of some people that was not easy because they had been very, very much like beauticians and all the rest, very, very face to face. And then you're suddenly struck into this, you know, the whole, you know, I have to advertise everything online. And have you found as well, do you think, or I'm sure you know this, but the, the traffic that is now on Facebook, I imagine is through the roof since, since, since the pandemic sort of started? Yeah, so something very interesting happened um, in March time, and, and it hasn't changed. So um, what's called inventory on Facebook uh, opened up. So inventory is the are the placements and the areas in which you can advertise. So mm -hmm. imagine somewhere around March time, even before the lockdown, and we're just talking UK at the moment, um, so somewhere around March, there's a date in my mind, it's feels like the 12th, but I'm not sure it is, is that the mm -hmm. end Somewhere around that time, all um, hospitality and physical businesses um, basically stopped advertising, so stopped mm -hmm. putting anything onto Facebook. So if you imagine the sheer amount of advertising bars and restaurants would have been doing, um, yeah. it, it's kind of like being on a very busy road and then suddenly all the cars disappearing on the road mm -hmm. and the traffic jam just opens up. <laughs> And combine that up with people having nowhere else to go but be on yeah. online. So a lot of people are online. So there's this weird spot of that. And then we work globally. So we work in Australia, um, in South Africa, in Europe, and in America. So we kind of saw this wave of this happening across the, the accounts. And the effect was much, much cheaper clicks um, and much cheaper CPMs, which is the mm -hmm. amount of people see your your uh, your advert whenever you put it out, and and then something something normally happens around about in, in election time. Um, whenever that's happening, um, ad ad networks are completely clogged up with advertising. But that didn't happen this year because because everybody else still wasn't advertising. So yes. there's been a really really strange, unpredictable 2020 dynamic in in the in the news feeds, um, yes. that. Kind of, if I, if I take a, a little bit of a step back with, and I, I say the opportunity is there right now, like it has never been before. Yeah. But, but on the other side, it's a really, really tough and crazy, crazy hard, hard time. So even in total crisis, there is some opportunity um, for people to to get in front of more people than they ever have before. Yeah. And that opportunity is lessening by the day. Um, yes. Better today than it um, will be tomorrow. Um, right now is a really, really good time for um, for advertising in the midst of, of absolute crisis. Yes, because funny, I've noticed I did a lot of online courses myself in sort of April, May time. Um, and I noticed actually in September, so many sponsored ads coming up on Facebook because they obviously thought, you know, there was lots of people coaches and all the rest out there. I thought, oh, my goodness, we've got this big audience. Let's go, you know, let's go for it. And obviously they had targeted, you know, they had they had researched who they were targeting quite well because because it was working um, and yeah. but when people come when people come like what what type of people actually do what type of business do you come to you normally actually to ask about Facebook ads um just you know what type of business is it normally oh it's it's such a spectrum it it, it could be uh, anybody we I purposely I heard so many we're, we're a little bit contrary if that's the right word to how business is supposed to be run at, at pbg so i think what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to find a niche and work yeah. to that and only and only do and only do that yeah. and i'm not i'm not keen on that um because i think that leaves you open to huge um risk of that niche falling down and you not having the the spectrum so and then i also think that you can get closed off to what else is happening around the around the world so there's two benefits to um not being in a, in a niche type of customer and one of them is you know that uh, non-reliance on on that niche and also the experience that happens in other areas there's a a clash of ideas that, that happens and it's really really yeah. interesting so specifically though the, the types of company customers that uh, come to us they can be b2b uh, customers and events and, and courses can be a big part of of what of what they do um, it can be e-commerce customers, people that want to sell their products uh, online mm. to consumers. Education uh, customers, people that are um, a school system in South Africa that we that we work with. Um, 
health companies as well in in Australia and and United States and fitness companies. Uh, a really interesting one was uh, one of our uh, customers, a uh, uh, online fitness company, the, the Netflix of fitness, if I can say that, um, where you can do fitness in your in your home. Um, oh my good absolutely boomed during mm -hmm. any lockdowns. So if you were pulling out your coffee um, table and you were turning on some fitness on your TV, um, they, they really were able to take that opportunity. So there's a whole spectrum of different types of customers and types of businesses mm -hmm. um, that work with us. And it keeps it so exciting, that, that mix. Yes, the variety, because I'm like that as well. Like, you know, like I work from everybody from like dog trainers to matchmakers, and that's what I love. I love the variety of it and that people, mm -hmm. and it's there's something about what you said there about not going into a sort of silo mentality because when you see what different businesses are doing, it actually gives you ideas of how to help them as well, you know, because lots of people are using different systems and, and tools and doing things differently. So it is, it's it keeps exciting. Have you, have you heard that, Alison, that you know you're supposed to niche into something? You're oh, yeah, if you're okay. Totally, totally. And I understand that to a point, but I also remember during, at the very start when the restrictions came into the UK, I remember, uh, I think he was an electrician being interviewed who was like he, all of his work was somewhere like the O2 centre, like all of his work and yeah. that's all of his work disappeared. Mm -hmm. So I think there's definitely something to be having, uh, definitely variety, <laughs> definitely variety. Yeah. No all your eggs in one basket as, as people say yeah. um, definitely and and do you think when people come to you what is the biggest challenge they actually have about and is it actually is it facebook are they coming primarily for facebook or google or instagram or is it, do you guide them a bit actually about where to put their ads it's a great great question it's like um there's i've always figured thought that there's about three stages of someone coming to us um mm. people that have an idea um and want to, to make it happen um people that have an idea and are making it happen and are already doing mm -hmm. some advertising but don't um but but it's not working and it's not going well yeah. and there there's money being wasted um um and then the third type are people where things are going well but they want it to go even even uh, mm -hmm. even matter um, and they want to make sure that they're maximizing the opportunity that they have um, right now. All of them have one thing in common. They know that um, digital advertising platforms like Facebook, Instagram and Google are out there. Perhaps other people are using them and they want to be able to um, harness that power of, of the ads. So we will look we will uh, look at what it is they want to do. So if they want to get people to sign up to an event or they want to um, get people to purchase a product or they want to, basically there's one one general thing, people will want someone to do something else. They want someone to, they want someone to take action. So what we yeah. then do is go backwards and we um, break that down and figure out that path and see what is the best path for, for that. And I think there's a case to be made that there's like a, golden core of um, advertising right now. Um, and it's Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Google ads, and email marketing. And being able to use that combination of, mm. of platforms um, has, uh, as in 2020, I, can, I can't think of a business that I couldn't, we couldn't affect positively with those four uh, things, with those four, four elements. So it, it usually comes down to, down to that. And there are other ones that circle around uh, mm -hmm. this, like LinkedIn or um, even things like Twitter as as well. But in terms of just speed of getting from um, someone who doesn't know about your business to getting them to purchase, mm -hmm. there's a combination of those four platforms that we usually use to help customers get to where they are. And I think it's just because there's attention on them now. Um, Facebook's mm -hmm. attention is waning, um, mm -hmm. but it's not going away we're still getting massive results on there instagrams is very popular and very very strong google ads is, is exceptional because it's it's the intent you know it's the it's the um it, it's the pure intent of someone typing in exactly what they want and if you're yes. there at the time, then, then, it's, then it's awesome um so there's different things for different parts of that customer journey and um, facebook and instagram ads are so important for that um initial contact um mm -hmm. And yeah, that 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 four of of platforms is is where we will normally bring people bring people to. But that changes over time as well. Yes, yeah, because it's funny. I I've been on Instagram a lot more than I was before, and I find that there are a lot of companies that I'm interested on 
in that are there too and there's much more I think I don't know there's something more about the way that people are writing posts on Instagram as well that it's a bit more chatty you know it's a bit more about yourself in a way and I think people like that you know and you know there's a lot of we need that isn't it we want we want to have the social contact when we can't have the social contact kind of thing <laughs> yeah I've, I've been reading some stuff and you know it's I, I saw something recently where um, on a bus, you, you know when you see on a bus or on a concert or, or things, you see people on their phone, like people are, yeah. are roasted in their in their phone. And I saw an, an older picture, maybe of uh, thirty years ago, where it was the tubes in London, and everybody was engrossed in their in their in their paper. Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting. Our attention is just so laser focused into the device or where information is coming from, and there's so much yeah. information coming out that it's that it's quite incredible. Yeah. And from, you know, any any sort of client that I have come across that maybe is running an event or uh, is trying to launch a course and they are trying to get that call to action. I think one of the big stumbling blocks is to really understand um, who their target market is and also what budget to set. And when you're looking at the target market, do you would you actually sort of help people to sort of to niche to, to sort of create that ideal profile and think, okay, well, where where you know where really are your market? Yeah, it's it's very important. So, but I suppose there's a few ways that that we that we look at it. One is is there a, um is there an audience that we can find easily on on Facebook? Um, mm -hmm. So. If your event was for business leaders in Northern Ireland, you know, I would be probably combining up the interest of uh, business owners or C-level executives or, you know, leaders in, in that area on, on Facebook and, and localizing it to Northern Ireland. And then I would be um, targeting with that Instagram and Facebook um, on it to get in front of those people initially. Mm -hmm. And I think for events, the, the trick is to um, build a certain amount of awareness over yeah. over time before the before the event um and then make it clear when the event is and then start to interact with some more heavy hitting more regular ads um after you've built up that initial amount of um people in in that um in that group the the budget is such a good is such a really good question and, and i think if we're talking northern ireland or we're talking ireland um we're a relatively small uh, player so um i always think that you know, the amount you spend is probably um, relative to how big the event is or how big the yeah. event to be, to be is. And usually at the starting stages of a campaign, we don't use any more than like five pounds per day to promote mm -hmm. something um, because we want to figure out, you know, how much we can get in front of people for. Like how much does it cost to get in front of a thousand people? Is it more than five pounds? Is it less than five pounds? And there's an amount of um, monitoring and watching and seeing how uh, well our ads are going are being received, and then um, optimizing it over time from that and building up the the budget um, over over time to get more people um, to the event. Yeah, because I suppose as well, it's hard it's hard to gauge with an event how many people are going to buy, and there there is always that sort of turn and fro and okay. I want to sell a hundred tickets at a hundred pounds. So you have to set a realistic budget for yourself mm -hmm. to think, okay, you know, I, I'm going to have to spend some money to get these people in, but then I'll have them. In. <laughs> and I think that's the gamble. Mm -hmm. it, it's a hard gamble to take, isn't it? Because you just don't know if people really do want to buy your tickets and maybe you're, maybe you have an event that actually it's not the topic is something that people are not interested in. Yeah. I, I think there can be a false flag, um, mm. around that area so I think it takes people seven times to see something before they take action mm -hmm. so what I see happening on Facebook ads is um, people doing an ad once and nobody signing up immediately and then thinking oh this doesn't work or or this is no good or this is not not for me um, it, it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of repetition and a little bit of uh, persistence I think is the is the word of trying to get in front of people seven times with something. And if on average seven times with something, and if they don't, um, if they're not interested after that, then I would change my approach. Um, but until then I wouldn't discount the platform that you're you're, um, yeah. you're you're working on. I think that's a very common thing that I that I see. Um, people's expectations that the first advert that they do 
will make them rich or get everybody yeah. to come to their event or, or and it, it just doesn't yeah. really work. It takes a little bit of time. And that's actually why um keep that budget low to start off with so you can learn yeah. that for a little bit of a little bit of time, um, a little bit of time first. Yeah, no, that's that's really good advice because it's like building your website at the start, you know. We all have that kind of thing. Oh, we'll build our website and suddenly we'll have like 20 customers knocking down the door and it doesn't work like that, sure doesn't. No, it, it's it's mm -hmm. tough. I mean, it should yeah. be tough because if everybody could do it, everybody mm -hmm. would. I don't mean if everybody could. I, I believe that everybody can do it. But if yeah. it was if it was easy to do it, um, to get uh, a thousand people to your event in 10 minutes, then everything would just be an event. There'd be everybody, yeah. an event. there's a slight barrier to entry. And, and I think that barrier to entry is persistence and yes. um, failing cheaply at it um, and, and keeping going for over the course of maybe a, a couple of weeks or so. Um, fail, 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 fail. See a little bit of light, try yeah. to focus on that and then uh, fail, fail, fail a whole bunch more. And then maybe a little bit later, you'll you'll start to learn the rhythms of how the platform works and, and your customers and your audiences. And, and then it'll start to, to work out. Patience and persistence are, are probably two of the most important things uh, when thinking about Facebook ads. Yes, yeah. Because um, funny, I, I've been doing a bit of work with um, a business coach who is important to join as well, actually. And she she would say that it's all about sort of playing, that you have to play with your own ideas and get things out there. And that the only way that you learn, you know, you, some things don't work and then you know they don't work. So you don't do that again and you do something else. And it is, it's it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's all about learning, isn't it? It's all the learning curve. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah, I think it, yeah, yeah. And, you know, for people, the budget, I think the budget side of things and your advice there about, you know, starting with a, a low budget and then sort of measuring that as well. Can you, well, I suppose if you have an event and you can see how many tickets are sold, you, that is you, there's a measurable uh, a way to measure success there but are there other things that you find it's harder to measure and people then aren't you know are a bit more reluctant to spend their money on ads yeah i i think that fundamentally for me results are the most important thing so the bums on seats is really important so people that are buying the tickets and, and just as a side note there's a whole um, area on Facebook dedicated to connecting up those who have purchased on Eventbrite or any other platform that you're using that will tell you which ad drove the um, the, the sales of that, of that course. So there's a part where you can see, like I did this ad and I got this many um, uh, signups to the event. Um, and that means that you would maybe double down on that going forward or do more of, of that. So there's a whole area of the Facebook pixel that links in with thing, uh, systems like Eventbrite. And, and other systems like that 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 manage events. So there's there's that side of thing things. But here's here's another maybe broader way to way to look at it. I, I think brand awareness is a little bit undervalued uh, these days, and it's really cheap. So getting in front of a lot of people in your target market and getting your name out there and getting your you know your business out there does not cost very very much. Mm -hmm. So if I know that my target market is maybe ten thousand people big. I know it's only going to cost me around about forty pounds to get in front of those those people. Um, yes. We were doing this years ago on a, in a newspaper or on a billboard. You're, you're talking in the thousands uh, of yeah. pounds to get in front of those people. So right now it's really cheap to get in front of people. There's a lot of data behind the views and the the clicks and and all of that in that audience that you're that you're sending your advert in in front of. So I think brand awareness is undervalued at the moment by, by people. And I think it has huge value um, of getting your name out there. Um, yeah. Because over time, if you're consistently doing that, whenever you have your third event or your fourth event, um, you'll be in that um, person's headspace um, yeah. and have a better better chance. Again, it takes a little bit of um, patience. And I think all the different steps, coming to your website, getting to know who you are, it's about building a relationship with people over time and not mm -hmm. going for that, you know, one-off hit and run um i've never heard of you before but um i want you to come to my to my event i mean i i get so many on a daily basis invites to events from people that i don't you don't know yeah. um and, and it's it, it's not something that I, it's not something that I, I may be interested in it but i just don't have the trust to say yeah i'm definitely going to spend my time on on that right now um yes. I think the whole journey and the whole game is just building up that relationship over time. And it's cheap to do that on, on the likes of Facebook and, and Instagram ads. Yes. And I think what you said, what you said there about, you know, 
about building the trust up over time and there are free ways to do that you know when you think that I, I, funny i was talking to andrea uh, kennedy from andrea kennedy communications just earlier today and we were talking about things like that you can go onto someone's podcast for example for free and be a guest and vice versa and then you're yeah. actually you know you're engaging in an audience maybe that you wouldn't be on before and like conversations like this and there are so many free things that you can do you know with blogs and all, all kinds of stuff before you get to that stage and i think that's an important thing for people to remember as well and, and trust it is it is all about trust like i trust you because i've met you before in you know bismarang meetings and all the rest and we collaborated behind the scenes in the the bismarang online summit earlier this year so you know i know that you'll do a good job so it is it's uh, there is that that whole level of things to it as well isn't there yeah, I, th I think so. I think that's important and I think it's undervalued. And I think it's that just what you said before was very important about, you know, you think you build a website and you think it'll be amazing the, fir the first go. Yeah. Whenever our customers are doing that, I say, expect this to be horrible. Expect this to go wrong. Do not expect success here. This is this is going to go wrong and it will be good for us and it will be healthy for us to start off yeah. with. And benchmark of what does not work and you know it would be incredible if you created an ad, ad and it just immediately immediately worked it takes it takes a certain amount of persistence and, and time to um to, to 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 do it yes and i think you know with facebook obviously we're doing this in facebook live today facebook really in behind the scenes they want you to use facebook don't they like they make everything so like I because I've helped clients before you know put the events on you know just on the, the Facebook events section but I noticed even recently every time you go in they've updated something else and you know they have it online now and you can duplicate them and, and there's so many new features all the time and the fact that Instagram and, and Facebook are linked as well now my goodness the world's your oyster isn't it really yeah I mean we it's it's quite incredible and it's part of why I really love what I do because because Facebook and um, and the Amazons and Apple and Google and all of those things they have not been around for a very long time they've been around yeah. for a decade or more now but they're not they're not really uh, old school but they have such a grip on what we do they have yeah. such a influence on the world and world politics and, and all of all of that so it's quite incredible and because of that there is this power struggle happening between those big big players and um, Facebook, without a doubt, want you to use Facebook and be on, on Facebook. And I see that if we do an advert that links to a YouTube um, video, and we do one that doesn't link to a video but is actually embedded in it, the difference in results is absolutely stark. The embedded Facebook video on video is way cheaper to get in front of people than whenever you link to a YouTube video. It has the same effect because on YouTube, you can still press play on the Facebook platform and you, and you stay in there. But um, if, if there's any link off it, the algorithm on Facebook um, brings you down. So you miss the opportunity to get in front of as many people as if you use Facebook's own uh, platform. And that is a very, very conscious um, effort from, from yeah. Facebook. And understanding little things like that and knowing little things like that is, in, is important because, you know, that... Um, uh, thing about you know not nailing it on the first go is uh is is because of how complicated the systems actually are they look friendly they look nice and you know easy to use but there's a lot of things going on a lot of factors a lot of global factors like we talked about you know um the ad inventory opening up so there's a lot going on um yeah it'll take a little bit of time to get to know them yes and that is why people are perfectly you you, you know you and your team like you have all that, all those years of expertise, you're helping lots of different businesses. And obviously if people have any questions about the ad, you you are the people to go to and put it on <laughs> or online. Yeah. It's, it's, really, it's really nice. We've been working from home for um, myself, Anthony, Nicole and Eve. Um, and our, we've got some contractors that work with us as as well. And they're, they're amazing. And we've all been working quite well. And it's, it's really cool to see because we're building up um, just this little knowledge base of constant learning with the team on the, on the platforms, and it's really exciting. Um, and I enjoy to enjoy to watch from my side. Excellent. And I say, Amy, if Amy's still here, Amy, Amy Stevenson has joined us as well, and she's a virtual assistant. She's actually very local. She's in between the two of us as well, and uh, she does a lot of social media um, management now for uh, small businesses as well. So actually, she had asked me one day, did I know anybody? 
who looked after Facebook ads and I'd given her your name because in the virtual assistant world, because we're helping lots of different people, you know, there's, there's lots of crossover and things like that. So Amy, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them. She's waving over, I see. And um, so if people want to want to join you or reach you, what is the best way for people to do that? Google PDG advertising. Um, we wouldn't be doing our job very well if you weren't able to find, find us recently, recently quickly. So you'd be able to go in there. We've got our, our PDG advertising podcast. And Alison, we were laughing before where um, I started off doing it daily whenever it started. We're up to episode 66, but I wow. definitely am doing it daily um, now. Um, it's quite cool. You can see from episode one how terrible it is. And then episode 66 <laughs> is marginally better i think but it's still it's still around but we love doing it it's like a little documentary of of what's been going on at uh, yeah. at pvg um but there's there's so many uh, comment or you know i'm um, getting touched in any way and we're, we're always more than happy to help and it's wonderful that people are you know starting up their own businesses social media management for businesses this is not going away social media no. it's not going away the digital it's it's only it's only going to become more prominent and it's it's about how well you do it and how well you know amy and everybody can can help people to um to get online and do it better yes it's because i'm in a women in business group um who uh, it's explore it actually and uh who are, are, are ladies who are just literally starting out and I, i'm sort of like a role model mentor for some of them and i said you know we were on a call a few weeks ago and i thought there was a lot of people in doing doing the Explorer program, and I thought, oh my goodness, you have such courage to start a business now. And if you can start a business this year, my God, you can do anything. It's you know? bad, isn't it? It's it's really yeah. impressive. You know that that bravery, that that courage. It's it's quite an it's quite incredible um, to to take that that leap. And I, I I definitely wonder would I have had the bravery or the courage to start this in a in a time because it was it was easy. It was good times to start the business whenever I started it. Um, yeah. that, that's very very courageous without a doubt. Yes, excellent. Well, I should put the link up um, to your Facebook and to your podcast uh, underneath this video. And thank you so much. And uh, I hopefully we should be coming to you soon. I'm hopefully to launch my own course in the year. So I will need lots of advice about uh, how to do that now. And Amy says, uh, a very exciting space to be in right now. Loved hearing your insight into ads. Thank you both. So thank you. That's great. Um, Alison, thank you so much for asking me to talk to you today. It's been really, really fun. I was looking forward to it and it, it's, been, it's been really awesome. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Chat to you later. Catch you later. Bye. Bye-bye.